Welcome to episode 13 of the Sweet Nature Cruise Cast. Hi, it's Linz, as always I'm joined by Marky. Hello. Hello, and today we're talking the pros and cons of booking a last minute cruise. But first, a little mood music. <laughs> What did you think of today's bit of music? Well, I will take it for the audio listeners that that face isn't impressed. So the quest continues for more mood music. That was the worst one yet. That was the worst one yet. I would try to go with something, because last week's one was quite a dark one. Yes, but at least that had something to say. That was like you'd been trapped in a lift. <laughs> you've been trapped in a lift. Okay, I'll keep working on it. Maybe we should just employ a professional to do as the theme. I too. just no, no, no to the the theme or no just, to the professional. I just no, no. Anyway, let's move on to the topic. Because mm-hmm. uh, as usual, we've got a topic of the episode, yes. and then three news stories that you don't know about yet, um, but you do know about the topic because you picked this week's one. I did pick this one, and I feel it might be helpful. And it is to me. <laughs> it might be helpful to you. So we're doing the... We'll flip this around a little bit. Okay. We're doing the pros and cons of booking a last-minute cruise. Yes. Which normally you introduce that and then I start it, but it's your topic. You do so, it. You do it. No, so now I'm passing over to you uh, for you to sort of kick it off. Okay. So usually we are very organised in our cruises. Yeah, yeah I would agree. book them years in advance. Sometimes she is in advance. Normally at least a year. Yeah, to get but... the best pricing on release and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Apologies if you can hear the dishwasher. I would say that at the minute we've got a free week in September. We have, yeah. And we've not got a cruise booked for that. No, not yet. So we will be, as we're in August, booking what's considered a last minute cruise. Did you just do quotation marks? Yes. Good. Well, yeah, that I think if you're within sort of two months of going on the cruise, is that what you would class as last minute? At what point does it become last minute? I would say, like, we are booked this time next month off. So that's kind of last minute. It's within... Yeah, because we, we currently don't have we anything have to go booked. on. it. We've got the time booked, but we haven't got a cruise yet. Now, one of the pros of this is that we can be quite open to where we go the con is if you see a really good price out of barcelona or rome or somewhere like that the flights are going to screw you over they are yeah that's the problem you might see a wonderful cruise out of miami and the flight will be more money well we had that challenge when we went on sun princess because we we got invited on Sun Princess after the original one was cancelled, but we only found out about that within like a two week period. By which point, the flights out there for us to book were crazy expensive compared to what they would have been. It's for us, Dan. <laughs> well, no, because we originally had the flights booked. Yeah, I know. But that. I don't feel that's a good example. No, but I'm saying that when you're in that sort of last couple of week period, we've seen it this oh, year the alone. Flights are mental. That the flight were massively more expensive. And we're going to have that challenge, which then means if we're not, if we have to take the flight element out of it. So now we're looking at Southampton. So Which then limits it a lot more. We've got Southampton, we've got a week. Yep. So we can only play with a week. Yep. Um, plus, plus or minus probably a couple of days. That's yeah, so we could. a massive issue. Well, no, it would, because I haven't got the holidays booked. And then I go into the people's holiday time. Okay. And that's the reason that we're not going on the monkey's cruise, because then it'd be clashing with my colleagues' holiday. Right. We've had this conversation at least six times. I'm not saying that we've not, but not on the podcast. Well, we're having it now <laughs> for prosperity. Okay. Is this so you can pull up the podcast next time you say, I told you that? We can't do it. No. So that's out of the question. So we've got a week to play with. And a lot of people will be the same. They'll book a trip. It is, because that, that, that's specifically us. Yes. I'm sure other people can go back and say, yeah, can I change my holiday by plus or minus a couple of days? Maybe they can. But either way, a lot of people book a cheeky week off and then try and make a holiday fit. Yeah, they do. 
And, and we've done that in the past, not yes. for a long time. I think the last time we did sort of a last minute cruise was that Ventura. Yes. Um, which coincidentally is actually going out during that week. It is going out during that week, and that's something I've got my eye on. Now, if you remember back when we booked Ventura, we booked it on the Friday. We were going on the Sunday. Yeah, we booked it a couple of days. Yeah, and And when we got down there, we had no luggage tags or anything like that. No, because it was too close. Because the agent hadn't paid the bill. So they had within there was an outstanding balance. Yeah, just to be clear, this isn't Martin Travel Stewart and Karen who we use now. No, <laughs> it's a different no it was just a, a large met them at that point. large cruise yeah. warehouse cruise company. deal company. Yeah. And they'd not settled up. No. So we <laughs> were told, Oh, it's not been settled. Yeah. And we were like, But we've paid for it. And then they did a bit of to be fair, they figured that out very well. Yeah, quickly. yeah, that it was one of their big... Partners. Yes. One of their big last-minute partners. Yes. Uh, but even so, that was a little bit hairy. It was, because it wasn't something that we'd encountered before, not something that we'd thought about. No. Um. Yeah, but having said that, we we'll probably won't book it with just three days to go. No. Again, that... I'm not saying we never would. What but... is the optimum, then, for booking the last minute that you well, feel comfortable with? That I would feel comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Probably, Knowing what we Probably do. two weeks out, I would feel quite comfortable booking something a couple of weeks out. So we're booking something two weeks from now? Within two weeks from now. Okay. Two weeks from now would be like the end point of me feeling quite comfortable. Yeah. Uh, then anything beyond that is a little bit getting close. Yeah. Now, do we look... When you're booking the last minute, if we could get a deal on a cruise line that we'd not been on before, do we risk it and go last minute for something that I'm I'm talking like um, Fred Olsen or Ambassador or something like that? Because we've already established we can't fly because we might look like we can get an amazing price out of somewhere, but yeah, flights the flight might be just too probably. Hey, probably. Um, I'll put my teeth back in. Put, have a drink. Just too expensive. Let's go with that. Be too expensive. So, and then you've got your overnights in a hotel as well. It is, and I think this is one of the big sort of cons to the last minute one, mm-hmm. which is that your incidental costs are probably going to be much more than what you thought about. Yeah. Having said that, you can get some cheaper hotels at the last minute. You can. Uh, we had a look at the hotel that we're staying at when we gone Virgin, and I rebooked that again last you night. Um, because that could have come down. Stuart had messaged me that his had come down, so I went on and checked. Um, ours were completely refundable. We didn't mm. pay anything until I went in there. Anyway, so I just cancelled it, rebooked it, and it came down £34. Yeah, which is not an insignificant amount of money. It's That's... not, because the hotel was only yeah. £30 to start with. Yeah. So it came down... Sub significantly, yeah. So, yeah, so you can get elements. I think you only real one that's an expense last minute is the sort of flight, and the car parking at the airport can be pricey as well. Well, if we use Virgin again as that example, the Virgin car park at the port sold out, yeah. So you would have to find somewhere else to park or an alternative. Or get a train down there, or which again is going to be pricey. Yeah, well, a couple of weeks out a month out, you're probably okay still. It's, it's within still that first week pricey. of it where it gets sort of expensive. So when we when we're talking about sort of pros and cons, because that's what we're talking about in this video. I'm still then, I'm still concerned about the dishwasher. I don't think people can hear the dishwasher. If you can hear a weird washing noise, let us know in the that's, comments. That's... You shouldn't be able to because the the mics are designed not yeah, to. Yeah, but when. You say it's not going to pick it up, and then I can hear it. Well, I'm not saying you can't hear it. (laughs) I can hear it as well. But let's move back on to the topic. The the cons, we're saying one of the biggest cons then is price increases. On flights. On flights. So the cruise may look really good. Yeah. But the flights might be really bad. What about um, clothing and what to wear and... Um, is two week out? Except we're saying two week for us mm-hmm. would be that optimal last minute. Yeah, we want 
really feel comfortable doing it sort of any closer than that. I just think it depends on which cruise line you're going on. Well, let, let's assume that you needed to buy some clothes. Is that enough time to get them if you needed them? On well, I don't know the what, what I. I'd like to think that we'd go on a cruise that we had the appropriate attire for. Okay. So it, you, you're saying that you have to take that into account? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the pros then, because we've talked a lot about the cons to it there. Yeah. I had another con. Go for it. We'd have to to post. All the speciality dining had gone. So you're going to get the worst room because you're only going to get what's left. These are cons. Yeah. I mean, for the, for the dining. You might not get, be able to book anything like that. All the nice excursions are probably gone that you can book online. Depending where you're going. Um, the, you're definitely in that sort of latter part of you're getting in, what's left. You're in what we call stateroom roulette when we book something like this and you, you don't know what you're getting. No. Right, whenever we booked relatively last minute is only them being a guaranteed room available yeah. now that's not to say that that's the same for everyone on every cruise line and every instance no, no. that's just our personal experience. well that's been the, the the best pricing but having said that when we did it on ventura yeah we didn't have an issue we got a good room it was pretty central it was yeah. a balcony it was nice so it's where we would have picked it i guess yeah we've been very lucky touch wood we'd be lucky again so I don't see that as being a massive issue. I do take in what you've said, though, in terms of um, the availability of things such as excursions. If you're going somewhere, you know, when we're looking at Southampton, for instance, if you're going to the fjords, some of the sort of more famous excursions and the really popular ones... May have already gone. May have already gone. Yeah. And that might be a reason then not to potentially do that cruise if that's yeah. something that you really want to do. Yeah. Uh, having said that, there's always plenty to do in, in ports anyway. Um, and you can always stay on trip. Yeah, you can. I don't think that that's necessarily a massive issue. But I think speciality dining, if that is something that you really want to do, might be a problem. Well, we'll see when we come to book it in two weeks. We can <laughs> be the, the guinea pigs. Well, we've been guinea pigs before. When we went on Ventura, did we have an issue booking speciality dining? No, because we, well, we did book it. I think we booked it on the ship on the first. Because that was our first P&I experience. It was, yes, it? yeah. Uh, we, I think we booked it before we got on. We couldn't book anything in advance because we were too close no, and it didn't update it on the system. On. We booked it when we got on because they did us a... It was one of those all first night, um, first night half price jobbies. I don't know if it was yeah. anymore. And I think we bought the drinks package when we got on as well, didn't we? Because we, we, we couldn't get any of that in our nope. We were too close to it for that. Yeah, one. yeah. And again, I think that's why if you're looking at that two week period, that's probably optimum. Yeah. Uh, in terms of getting. We'll see, we'll see, we'll but see. There, there is that chance of sort of last minute cancellations. Okay, let's talk about the pros then. Okay. We we spent a lot of time sort of on the downside to doing it. Okay. What's the big pluses to it? You might get to do something that you didn't think you were going to get to try. Such as? Such as we might be able we could look at Fred Olsen out of Newcastle. Yeah, if there was good pricing you mean. If there's good pricing, that's it. You have a budget in mind yeah. and then see what that gets you. Because that's what'll happen with us. We don't we won't look at the cruise and go, oh, We'll, we'll, we'll know how much we've got to spend yeah. and take it from there. Yeah, I think that's a, a fair thing. When you're talking about sort of that last-minute positives, though... You feel you get more value for money? Yeah, OK. I, I see where you're going from that. Then. Thank you. The, it's not always... It, oh, it, our very, very first cruise was a hot deal. It were a very last-minute, not within two weeks, but I think about... Four, five, six week out? It yes. wasn't far out. No, it wasn't. We it was certainly it. within two months. It was certainly within two months. Um, and at that time, that was Royal Caribbean. Mm -hmm. They used to do hot deals. Yeah. And we, that was the last minute. Yeah. They don't sort of touch those anymore. No, but what do they tend to, I'm not talking about Caribbean, I'm talking about cruise lines generally, because they don't advertise these last minute ones discounted in that way anymore no and some cruise lines such as princess say that you'll never get cheaper than when it first comes on sale through them mm -hmm. is that where you have to then go through an agent to get that last minute deal now what i've found is when we've booked 
last minute and gone direct, we've ended up with a nicer room than yeah. if we've booked and used a one of the big outlets. When did we book it last minute again, apart from Venture? I want to say... Um, Obviously, I know Navigator, but that's a long time. Cunard. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. We booked that late direct. Okay. And that worked out. We got a really lovely room. Yeah. We did get an ice room on there. For what was not that price. Yeah, now I can't say that's because we booked it direct. Well, then again, it. this was just coming out of COVID. Are we now going to find that what we think we're going to get and what we actually get are two different things? Well, I'll take it is when we did both of those ones, cruising had just restarted. Now, do we talk to our agent and say, what can we get? Or do we just scour the... Uh, well, I think there's a bit of both. We'll be scouring over the next couple of weeks and going, what, what have we got on there? But is, we'll definitely be speaking to Stuart and Karen and going, you know, what, what is the that's... Do we look at one, one of the US discount houses? Do you mean like out? vacations to go? Yeah. You see, when you're talking last minute ones, that's what a lot of people... They come into their own, don't they? Think of. Um, I mean, you do get it with some of the big sort of European travel agents as well, but I don't think there's an equivalent of vacations to go. Not in that Not that sense. I can think of. It just, it just it gives me a bit of anxiety. Well, you don't have the same protections. If you're listening to this and you're not in the UK, then it's a, you're not bothered. But within the UK, we have the sort of up to an atoll protection, depending on whether you need it to fly or not fly and whether you're taking yeah. a package and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, certainly with, you know, just recently we had the IT problem where a lot of the planes have cancelled yes. within the last couple of weeks. Yeah. If you bought that separately. Oh, dear. You can't get your crew. Your crew, you won't get your money back on. No. So I feel we've gone a little bit hardcore there. So let's go back. Let's dial it back. So we're going to use, we're going to do a little bit of research to book this cruise. We're going to speak to his agent and we're going to find a cruise two weeks out yep. to book. Yep. We've got a budget in mind. Yeah. We should get something that we like. I would, well, it'll be a cruise, which means... Will it be... Anyway. Yeah, but would we be happy to go on a ship that we've done before? Or are we going for a new ship? What's the deal? Well, if you're talking about us or you're talking about for the people, right, when you talk about it from our perspective, then I'd personally prefer to do a ship that I've not done before. Okay. Well, or a ship that's had a massive renovation. Yes. So, for instance... Um, Navigator of the Sea. I know it's not over here. No, it's not. But we've done Navigator three times. Yeah. Well, I've done it twice. You've done it three times. Yeah. But that had a massive overall mm -hmm. sort of four years or so ago ish. So it's almost unrecognizable in a lot of what it's got on there now compared to last time. Yeah. So I'd be quite happy to go on a ship that um, I've done before, but it's changed a lot. But I don't know if I'd want to do one that I'd done like maybe six months ago. Okay. But that's for us specifically. Yeah, so so the in respect of pros, it's should be cheaper. Should be cheaper. Theoretically. Yeah. Um should get a little bit more like choice to what in your price range to what you'd normally have. Yeah. And certainly if you're willing to take a little bit more of a risk. Yeah. And use yeah, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with vacations to go at all. Oh well, no. They've been around what... for a long time, but you're coming out of your comfort zone, well, the value you would normally book something that I, you've got a little bit more sort of open to you. No, I, I think they're a great resource because they list every cruise going in whatever month and whatever. Oh, they're yeah, fantastic. They're, they're a great resource for that. Um, so, yeah, we've got to... Where we go, we don't know. No. But I think, really, you're only the only pro... Unless you can think of something else. Yeah. Is that it will probably be cheaper. And it'll be a nice surprise. <laughs> That's a pro. Well, you don't uh, well, know where you're going. I'll, I'll give you an even better pro. What? Your cruise countdown is going to be really short. That's great. That's true. That's really true. That's, we've got, I like that. We've got a cruise book for 2026. Yeah. Which, as of now, is like 20 months away. Yeah, well, they do it. Well, yeah. And that sounds a long way away. You immediately book it and you're in close Count. to being single figures. Yeah. We'll wow. book it and have, have 
somewhere between 28 and 14 days ish yeah. when we book it, which makes it come around very quickly. Then, yeah, you you then got to got what do I need to pack? What have I got to wash? Oh, I know all that sort of stuff. Um, but I think yeah, getting straight into that cruise countdowns that quite a, a big pro. That is a huge pro. So uh, yeah, price probably cheaper. Um, Hopefully cheaper. I hope it's cheaper. It should be cheaper. Well, I wouldn't expect it to be more expensive. But you should be but able it, to get But it sort may of be more expensive than, for instance, when um, it first went on sale. Yeah. We it, we have seen, yeah. you know, certainly Cunard yeah. of Lately, Princess of Lately, their direct pricing is definitely more mm-hmm. than what it was when the first went on sale. Yeah. Okay. But we will report back. Yes. On that sort of. And then we can do, do a full like summary of what it was like and whether we'll do it again and whether we did go out of his comfort zone and whether it was a nightmare. <laughs> so... Well, we will report back, but it brings us nicely into the news story. Okay, lovely. Because the first one that I'm going to touch on, um, and they're all happier news stories, because last episode they were a bit darker news stories. Oh, okay. Um, not dark, dark, but, oh. um, but one of the ships that were looking that we've looked at Mm -hmm. has been disney yes so the first news story is about disney oh lovely not about the one we're looking at but it's still about disney and and that is about disney treasure disney treasure which is the wish size so this isn't it's not adventure it's not the the, the disney massive one yeah that one's still being done i think that comes out in 26 in singapore it's definitely not this year no might be 25 um, but Disney Treasure floated out this weekend. Oh, lovely. On, I think that it means was it's more pricey. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's already got more expensive. Um, and it's having its maiden um, on the 21st of December. Wow, the Christmas one. Yeah. So we'll come back to that and say, don't forget Oh, that. okay. So, uh, Port Canaveral. Um, and as they move that out of the, I think it's like Port Hall 6 or Port 6 or something that it's called, because it made me think of Hall H at yeah. Comic-Con. Uh, as they moved it out, they literally moved Disney Destiny's block in. Wow. So Disney Destiny is the next one yes. in the wish size. Yeah. So again, not adventure size. No, no, well, that's only right. Um, but when it first came out, I think I put, or when they were first announced they were buying uh, with Genting. Yes, Genting. Genting. When they were buying that, which will be the biggest Disney ship ever. Yes. I said they should call it Disney Marvel. You did. Because, obviously, the Marvel interaction of the comics. And it's, and big. It, it's big. It's Marvel. Yeah. And I was like, that's just a slam dunk. I was so confident oh, yeah. on that. Uh, I was wrong. It, they called it Adventure. Yes. But what they're doing on Disney Destiny, yeah, not Adventure, is they're putting Marvel characters front and centre in it. Oh, lovely. So when you go in there, apparently the one that you're going to have is T'Challa, uh, the Black Panther statue in the main oh, atrium. Other than like Cinderella, right? Yeah. And Tiana. they're going to have yeah. um, a lot more Marvel heroes and villains yes. around there. Oh, lovely. But they're also going to have um, a lot of um, hero and villain, and villain especially, inspired bars and lounges. Love it. Which I thought were a great idea. Yeah, I love that. They can um, keep that. Does that appeal? Do you think that'll appeal well, a little bit more? I love no, it. I was, do you think it'll appeal a little bit more to an audience outside of just sort of those going on with families? That maybe those that are into the comic a little bit more and the movies. Maybe. And maybe that's what they're hoping. But maybe just, yeah, slightly different yeah. audience. Yeah. Um, and what do you think about the maiden being twenty first December? How confident would you be? I just think in the Because that's your Christmas you, holiday. When have you got moved to that one and that was You're going on there with your family, your okay, kids, and then, you, and then you have to tell them two days before it's not on. No, you're just thinking about how there's always teething troubles. Good luck, Disney. Good luck. <laughs> well, I'm sure Disney will, will nail it and yeah. it'll all be perfect. Yeah. Uh, and everyone is on it. I'm sure no matter even if there are some teething troubles, we'll have a fantastic time because it's Christmas and it's a Disney yeah. ship in there. Yeah. You know? Anyway, story two. Yes. Norwegian Onco. Mm-hmm. Which is one of their Breakaway Plus vessels. Okay. Um, that came out in 2019. Yes. And it's, they've said that it's now going into uh, dry dock very, very shortly um, to have extensive work done. Okay. So it's five years old. It's about right when they normally do that. The first go, yeah. Um, 
but it's having quite a lot done. So it's having dining venues changed. Okay. I'll come back into these in a second. With one menu. Uh, adding an adult only area. Nice. Um, repurposing more spaces in the state rooms. Okay. No, I'm always less sure on that element, so we'll come back. Mm. And expanding suites in the um, Haven area. Okay. So With one menu. Maybe with two menus. Ooh, that'd be good. Now, one of the bits that they're changing mm -hmm. um, is the, um, it's called Spice Hitch Tour. Yeah. And that's the adults only outdoor lounge. Nice. Which um, has hot tubs, it has pools and a bar. Um the dining venues, they're getting rid of two dining venues. Okay. Which we haven't been into either of these. No. Los Lobos and Coco's. Mm -hmm. They're being removed and their former spaces are being used to expand Cagney's Steakhouse and the Teppanyaki. Okay, so they must be get they must have the Well, that would suggest that the demand Cagnes and Teppanyaki the demand are, are exactly. in demand and the other ones weren't. Yeah. But it seems strange that they're going from four specialty dining down to two. But they must be the two most popular. Yeah, there's obviously... The data must be there. The data absolutely must be there. But you thought maybe they might have potential looked to put in different ones that are working on other ones? Yeah, but, I mean... It's less more. I think that NCL are looking at everything at the minute. And if they know that they could book that restaurant, those two restaurants up twice over every night, then, of course, compared to the others... Mm -hmm. Well, we've covered, we've covered the NCL cost-cutting on a previous podcast. Mm -hmm. And definitely getting rid of two restaurants and having it all going to those two yeah, yeah. Uh, makes sense. Hopefully do not just go into one menu for the main dining room, <laughs> which you talked about on that. Oh, I did. Old Nostradamus at the side of us. Um, but it's also getting 24 more balcony bedrooms. Okay. So that must mean they're taking out a lot of space that we use for Somewhere. other things. Yes. They haven't said what. Um, a couple of club balcony ones uh, and repurposing part of a lounge right. for that. Um, but it's going to increase occupancy by about 50 people. Okay. So not massive. No, but, but they from must... 4,004 to 4,052. Um, well, you would have been right for the figure. I rounded up. Okay. Uh, so it wasn't quite Okay, 50, I know it's 40, a bit maths so. uh, You were doing really well at oh, maths. Well. So. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, see what happens with that. And then the final story. Okay. Um, it seemed right that we had a virgin story. Mm -hmm. We've gone virgin for Very soon. 18 days at the time of recording. We're going to sound really morning now, aren't we? They know we need to sort out another late late availability <laughs> one, and we're going on one. In, yeah, in... but that that's a four-day one, and we've had that booked for a long time. Yeah, and we're, so we're this going one, with friends. This yeah. one just booked on this one. Yeah. We're going on a we, 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 we need a recovery. <laughs> Yeah, may maybe it's sort of like the Fred Olsen or a saga one might be appealing <laughs> after this. Uh, just give us a chance for the liver to recover a little bit. Um, now, I'm not convinced that you're, you love Virgin. You do love Virgin. And you're really looking forward to this cruise? I up? do. I'm looking forward okay. to this. I think the new thing that they're launching on mm -hmm. board, you're not going to be as into. Okay. They're launching a onboard running club. <laughs> no. Um, it's called the 8LRC, which is the Eight Legs Running Club. Okay. And apparently... It sounds it, like my initials. It does almost sound like your initials, apart from there's no R in your initial. Regina. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you oh know your plans. Oh, <laughs> uh, that apparently came about when they had... Someone on board recently who ran a marathon on the running track. Okay. Um, and then... If everybody does that. No. Uh, I've practically I've never seen anyone on the running track. But everyone talks about Virgin being a partnership, but it's actually a mega fitness it, ship as well. The, the people are taking it really serious on that. Uh, far more than I've seen on any other crew. Mm -hmm. um, but then they had another gentleman on it who ran for... You look to have a smirk on your face. No, I'm not smirking. And, uh, it looks like there's a laugh bill. Oh. Um, and another gentleman ran solid for 24 hours for charity on it. Okay, that's very good. And ran 639 laps, which was the equivalent of 160 mile. Wow. And so off of the back of that, they thought, let's build a running club. Okay, that's nice. So from what I can gather, it's the first running club at sea. Okay. So, it, again, it's just Virgin doubling down on the fitness. The, the fitness one that you can come on board, enjoy all this fantastic food, but still 
have your fitness regime that you add it on. And well done for Virgin to continue to do that. We will continue to um, enjoy the food and the cocktails more. The yep. less so in the running club. Mm-hmm. Um, but that sort of brings us up to the end of the cruise cast then. Well, thank you, darling. I finished my wine. I made oh. it last week in a small one. Well, you had a bigger one than me because you finished most of this yesterday. Oh, yeah, it was iron in wine. <laughs> is that an official thing now, iron in wine? Iron in wine is the best. <laughs> oh, uh, cheers. Thank you for listening and have a lovely day. Thank <laughs> you.